Now, ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention for a moment? At this time, I'm going to put you into lecture mode so we don't have any distractions or interruptions during the call. You'll still be able to hear us, but we can't hear you. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to part six of our Law of Attraction series. And this week we'll be talking with special guest Paul Massetta, who is the editor for BetterLivingWithHypnosis.com, and he'll be sharing his insight on overcoming fear of success. But first, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you Steve G. Jones. Now, Steve has been practicing hypnotherapy since the 1980s. He is the author of 22 books on hypnotherapy. Steve is a member of the National Guild of Hypnotists, American Board of Hypnotherapy, President of the American Alliance of Hypnotists, on the Board of Directors of the Los Angeles Chapter of the American Lung Association, and Director of the Steve G. Jones School of Clinical Hypnotherapy. Now, Steve is a board-certified clinical hypnotherapist. He has a bachelor's degree in psychology from the University of Florida, a master's degree in education from Armstrong Atlantic State University, and Steve is currently working on a doctorate in education at Georgia Southern University. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the call clinical hypnotherapist Steve G. Jones. Steve, are you with us? I am, Frank, and how are you this evening? I'm doing well, Steve. Thank you for asking, and welcome to part six of our Law of Attraction series, and I'm looking forward to getting into this information tonight on how to overcome fear of success. I am, too. What a wonderful program we have for everyone this evening. You know, before we go any further, Frank, I think people should know a little bit about you and who you are. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Frank Mangano. He's a consumer health advocate and a natural health writer who has authored and published hundreds of articles pertaining to natural health. He's the author of three best-selling books and an independent researcher. Frank, it's an honor to be on the call this evening with you. Thank you very much, Steve. It's my pleasure as well. And at this time, I'd like to introduce our special guest for this evening. And ladies and gentlemen, Paul Massetta has been in the health and fitness industry for a number of years, and he has held both corporate and sales management positions in various fitness organizations, including the largest fitness provider in the Northeast. Paul is the editor for the BetterLivingWithHypnosis.com website, and he is currently working on a self-improvement audio series, which is scheduled to be released in 2008. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the call, Paul Massetta. Paul, are you with us? Yes, sir, I am. How are you gentlemen this evening? Good evening, Paul. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm fine, Frank. Thank you so much for asking. Hey, Paul, this is Steve doing great also. You know, Paul, a lot of our listeners have really taken an interest in what we're doing here, which is bringing experts like yourself to talk about topics that they really know well, topics that are near and dear to their hearts. So a lot of people, as usual, have written in with a lot of questions. So I hope you're ready for a lot of questions. I certainly am, Steve. Okay. Now, the first one is from me, because I just want to hear it uh, from you, an expert. What is fear of success? Well, Steve, fear of success is really many different things. It really all depends on the person, because success is different to everybody. It's really nothing more than achieving whatever goal you, you set, you know, and having a fear of it, which is, again, different for everyone. And some common manifestations uh, of fear of success include, you know, belief that you don't deserve any positive experiences that result from your accomplishments and successes, um, fear that you'll achieve all the goals you set out to achieve, but still remain unhappy, uncontent, or dissatisfied once you achieve the goal, lack of belief in your own ability to sustain your progress and the accomplishments that you've achieved in your life. Um, it, it's the opposite of fear of failure, and that fear of failure is the fear of making mistakes and losing approval, whereas fear of success is the fear of being recognized and honored for your accomplishment. Fear of success is a fear that your accomplishments can self-destruct at any time. It's a belief that there are others out there who are better than you, who will replace you or displace you if you do not maintain your performance record, belief that no matter how much you're able to achieve or accomplish, it will never be enough to truly sustain success. 
goals. Fear that once you've achieved the goals you've worked diligently at, the motivation will not continue or will fade. Essentially, it's a fear of anything that's related to success that will have a negative impact on one's life. Okay, very well put, Paul. I appreciate you clarifying that. You know, we have a question here from a person on our email list, Lisa, from Wisconsin here in the U.S., and she would like to know where fear of success comes from. You first have to understand these two points. Fear of success is nothing more uh, than a thought, and our thoughts are our reality. Okay, reality only exists in our minds. What we accept as real is our reality. We all know how two people can look at the exact same thing and see something different. And that in itself clearly exemplifies how our thoughts determine our reality. When we dream, the thought process is the same as it is when we are awake. And, you know, we've all had dreams that seemed as real as real could be until we wake up. But the brain, which created the reality when, we are, when we're asleep, it actually works the same way when we're awake. Our brain and thoughts are determining what is our quote-unquote real experience. Uh, Deepak Chopra, you know, in my opinion, explains this best in an example about a CD that someone's playing with 20 tracks on it. Uh, while there are 20 tracks on the CD, the only one existing in our reality is the one we're actually listening to. If we've never listened to the others, they're not a part of our reality. We've never heard the melodies that they have, the effects that they generate, the instrumental sounds that they have, or the feeling that they instill within us. In fact, we don't even actually know if they exist or not. So therefore, they are not real to us, okay? The only thing that can be defined as our reality is our acceptance of the present. Now listen closely to what I'm saying here, Steve. What we accept as our present life is our reality. Okay, the past is nothing more than memory. The future is nothing more than our imagination. So where do the thoughts in our memory and imaginations come from? All of the thoughts in our minds are composed of past events and relationships. Additionally, the strength or power level of the thought also corresponds to the strength or importance of the relationship and the event which influenced it. Now, in most cases, not all, but in most cases, our strongest, deepest, most meaningful relationships come from our parents or those who raised us from birth. The same is true of our experiences. They are the first people we see, the people whom we first love, and ultimately the first people with whom we form relationships with. So these people nurture us and create a reality for us in a time when we're too young to create it for ourselves. Now the impact that these events have on a person's life are tremendous, okay? It can work in many different ways, okay? You can have either a parent that discourages you, whether they realize it or not, or a parent that encourages you, which of course is what we all want, or a parent that doesn't play a role that's active enough in your childhood to prevent you from getting information from outside sources. Now let me explain what I mean. Let's say your dream is to become a basketball player. Okay, you can have a parent that either A, supports the dream, B, doesn't support it, or C, pays no attention to it. So in case A, the thought is referenced with the parent's opinion, strengthened by that opinion, it's basically like a seed that's planted in the brain of the child and left to grow. Okay, it's, essentially it's planted into the subconscious mind to grow into a positive reality. In case B, where the parent doesn't support it, the same thing happens, but the result is negative. Okay, the seed is planted, it grows, but it grows into a negative thought, which eventually turns into a negative reality. Now, in case C, anything can happen. Because now what happens is you have the insight of outside opinion. That's what determines the ultimate thought, which will eventually transform into the ultimate reality. And again... This is just one example of how these thoughts are originally manifest. Uh, you know, fear of success also originates from negative events that occurred in our past. Any negative event which could have been remotely related to success or achieving a goal in your mind will ultimately create a thought that says success and everything attached to it is negative. Now, truly determining where these thoughts come from is an extensive process, as every person's life, again, is different. Rather than spending large amounts of time figuring out where they come from, it's really really just best to address them and fix the problem, which I will get into later. Okay, Paul, very well put. I appreciate your tremendous insight that you bring to this idea of 
fear of success because there's so many people. It is a foreign concept. Now we have a question here, and I hope I'm pronouncing this name right. It's Kimiko, I believe, from Tokyo, Japan, and she writes, what are the consequences of fear of success? There are countless consequences associated with fear of success. Um, it really all depends on what success means to that person. For some, it could mean money, a good career, owning their own business, finding true love, being a good parent. The list goes on and on. So the consequences are really associated with what success really means to that individual. Because you have to understand something. Not everybody... Um, react to fear in the same way. You know, for some people, fear serves as a catalyst for action. Some people actually, you know, when, they, when they're afraid of something and they feel that fear within them, it motivates them to take action. The action that they take sometimes isn't always the right action, but it, it motivates them to take action. Then you have people that suffer from paralysis. So if you suffer from paralysis, your fear of success is actually paralyzing you from taking whatever action you should be taking to get you to where you need to be. So the consequence ultimately is that, you know, you're not going to achieve whatever it is that, you know, your heart really desires. Countless consequences, what I will address are the two biggest general ones, okay? First, there are the consequences which result from inaction and or procrastination. It's the same thing, or paralysis, I should say, which is nothing. Okay, you can be determined, knowledgeable, persistent, talented, use your time efficiently, and have all the makings of someone great. If you don't take action, it all means nothing. Nothing results from inaction. Okay, action generates the energy needed to create and sustain success. When you do nothing, nothing happens. So that's your first biggest consequence, is by doing nothing, nothing happens. The second consequence which results from paralysis or inaction are those associated with actions that actually sabotage success. I'm going to get on a little bit of a deeper level here when I explain this to you. These actions are taken because people have been mentally programmed to believe that they don't deserve success. Okay, I tell the story all the time of people who were raised around beliefs like money is the root of all evil, money isn't everything, money can't buy happiness, the rich are ruthless and greedy, and so on. What happens is that these thoughts, they get planted into the subconscious, okay? And the subconscious then communicates these thoughts, and the universe answers accordingly as it does with everything else, and causes these people to be what I call money repellers. Okay, no matter what they do, they can't seem to make money. Every venture that they try fails, every risk that they take doesn't work out, and even when money is outright given to them, like when, they, like when people win the lottery, they spend it foolishly and wind up broke all over again. Why? Because the universe has been told and has been given a message that says this person should not have money and therefore they're constantly trying to get rid of it. Which again is why they spend foolishly and they don't accurately make the right investments or think about th things before they jump into them and the universe just finds a way to take the money from them. Just the way some people use the law of attraction to attract money to them, these people are just repelling it from themselves. So those are the two biggest consequences. You have consequences that result from inaction, and then you have consequences that result from success sabotaging action. Excellent answer, Paul. Thank you so much for sharing that. And Kiniko, I'm sure that more than answers your question, what are the consequences of fear of success? So, Paul, thank you for being so thorough. Uh, let's see, we have another question here from Nigel. I printed it out. Nigel in Sydney, Australia. And he writes, how does fear of success stop you from attracting what you want? All right, well, as I said before, um, fear of success is really nothing more than a limiting belief, okay? And to effectively use the law of attraction, uh, you must take a few steps. I, I believe um, you had given us your process for uh, using the law of attraction in our first call, and one of the specific steps is to clear limiting beliefs. Let me explain to you what limiting beliefs are like. I mean, essentially, they're like roadblocks. So what happens is you, you start the process, and as you're trying to progress and move forward, you have these limiting beliefs which serve as roadblocks. They keep jumping in your way and preventing you from going forward. And if you can't clear them effectively, you can't use the law of attraction. 
because remember something, the law of attraction is always in action. It's happening 24-7, 365, whether you realize it or not. So using the law of attraction to fuel your progressive enhancement, you know, you, you can't do that unless you can effectively clear the limiting beliefs because the, the beliefs are what govern the whole use of the system. If you can't effectively get rid of them, you cannot attract anything that you want. So fear of success can halt the whole process of using the law of attraction effectively. In fact, clearing limiting beliefs is a huge problem for many people. Steve, back to your question. Not only does fear of success destroy your chances of using the law of attraction, your main responsibility is to prevent and repel success at all costs. Um, you know, your fear of success, if you let it get the best of you, it will ultimately stop you from achieving anything that you want. Uh, but something designed to ensure and strengthen your success, however, I noticed, is your Titanium Abundance Membership Program, which can be found at www.gethypnosis.com. And uh, there, I believe, people can find 12 MP3s that range from everything, including attaining unlimited wealth, to improving your life balance. So, um, you know, anybody that, that, that really wants to use the law of attraction and, and has questions about it or really wants to find a way to use it as effectively as possible, Log on to www.gethypnosis.com now. Well, Paul, I appreciate that, and I appreciate helping our listeners find the help that they want. Very thorough answers. I think my favorite part of what you said was that you can help fuel your progressive enhancement, and that says so much. I mean, you can fuel it, it's progressive, and you're enhancing your life. So by getting over fear of success, that's what you can do, and you can move forward with your life, and that's what this is all about. Frank, are you there? I certainly am, Steve. I'm, I'm enjoying everything that Paul has to say so far. Taking some good notes, I hope. Oh, absolutely. I hope the listeners are as well. Oh, I'm sure they are. These calls are just remarkable in what they can produce, and the feedback we've gotten from listeners who write in to us thanking us every day has just been outstanding. Frank, do you have some questions for Paul? I do, Steve. Thank you very much. And, Paul, what I'd like to do is start off with this because I'm sure this is going to seem like a ridiculous thing. Don't we all want to achieve success? So my question to you is why would anyone want to stop themselves from something that is going to help them? People don't even realize that they have a fear of success. I mean, who really wakes up in the morning, looks in the mirror, and says, I'm afraid of being successful? I mean, do you know anybody that, that does that, Frank? I, I don't. I certainly don't know. Right, because it doesn't quite work like that. You see, the thoughts are hidden deep in the subconscious where they can't easily be seen. The effects that they have, however, are just as strong, if not stronger, than anything perfectly visible. So what happens is, you know, the subconscious mind is a powerful thing, and it can be used to achieve ultimate success or it can hinder any chance of success possible. It's non-judgmental. Okay, it accepts whatever suggestions it is fed. It's not judgmental by any means. Its only responsibility is to process information and communicate that information to the universe. Your beliefs, they're like seeds, and you plant those seeds into your subconscious. The seeds, no matter what you do with them, will grow. They may grow into a plant that you might not like. They may grow into a plant that eventually dies. Regardless of what the ultimate turnout is, they're always going to grow. So what happens is, if you plant these seeds in your mind, regardless of what you think, they are going to grow and they are going to manifest into something. When you have beliefs like this that have been buried into your subconscious for such a long time from experiences, they may have been buried there, you might not have even realized that they were being planted there, but regardless, they're still growing. That's what's ultimately uh, you know, causing you to have the fear of success or the fear of what you perceive as negativity that comes attached to success. Like, you know, for instance, as I was saying before, you could have all kinds of fears. You could have a fear that you won't find happiness in your accomplishments or that you'll be perpetually dissatisfied with life. Essentially, you're just attaching negativity to the feeling of success. And that really happens on a deeper, more subconscious level uh, than it does on a more conscious level. As I said, you know, no one really, no one really wakes up in the morning terrified of, of success. They're really more afraid of what they perceive to be negativity attached to success. 
And thank you for answering that, Paul, and I'm sure that helps clarify that question for a lot of our listeners. And we have a question here from a newsletter subscriber, Janice from California, Paul. And Janice writes in, she would like to know, how does fear of success differ from fear of failure? Whatever you're afraid of, you're afraid of, and that dictates the difference between the fear. If you're afraid of height, that's your fear. That's what you're afraid of. If you're scared of commitment, that's your fear. So obviously they are different. They do fall into the same category because fear of failure is just another limiting belief. The only difference is that most people recognize this fear because it's more visible than fear of success. When I asked you before, who really wakes up in the morning, looks in the mirror and says, I'm afraid of being successful, you said you don't really know anybody that does that. But we do know plenty of people afraid of failure. That's something that they consciously know and that's something that they are aware that they have. Failure is a lot more visible. You know, negativity associated with failure is a lot more visible than negativity associated with success. But again, it's still just another limiting belief in its own right. Um, fear of failure usually results in paralysis more than it does in success sabotaging actions. In other words, if you have a fear of failure, essentially what you're afraid of is that you're going to do something or you're going to attempt to do something and, you know, the result is not going to be what you wanted. Rather than take a risk and move forward, you do nothing. You suffer from paralysis and you take no action, okay? And nothing happens. Whereas in fear of success, you're really afraid of negativity associated with success. You know, it could be, again, that you're gonna achieve success but you're still not going to be happy. So what happens is you may have desire deep within you to be successful. Something tells you every day, I wanna be successful, so you take action. Okay, but then you have the limiting beliefs planted in your subconscious mind, which won't stop you from taking action, but they'll do something even worse. They'll make the actions that you take sabotage your success. You will wind up consciously, purposely doing things um, to ensure failure. So those who suffer from fear of failure would rather take no action and do nothing than risk losing or failing. But again, that in itself is a failure of its own. You know, if, if you have a goal or you have certain dreams and you don't take action, in my opinion, you failed. You haven't, you, you're right back where you started from. So it, that in itself is a failure in itself, if you ask me. So it, it seems to me, Paul, that the underlying cause here of fear of success, it, it all goes back to limiting beliefs. Is that correct? Absolutely. It all goes back to limiting beliefs. Okay, and that leads me in, into my final question for you this, this evening, Paul. Now, you're a successful in, individual. You, you worked your way up to becoming a general manager in one of the largest fitness uh, chains in, in the Northeast. You, you've attracted that dream house that you always wanted. You drive the vehicle of your choice. You have a healthy and successful relationship. So here's my next question. What is your exact process that you use to overcome fear of success and achieving everything that you've ever wanted? You know, the first step is you have to identify the fear itself. Don't be in denial. Don't tell yourself that you don't suffer from this fear of success because if you, if you do that, you're never really acknowledging that there's a problem and you can never fix the problem if you don't acknowledge the fact that it's real. The first step definitely is to identify the fear itself. The first part is done. Now, if you're not sure whether you suffer from this limiting belief, you have to ask yourself a couple of questions because as I said before, a lot of limiting beliefs and fear of success in particular is buried deep in the subconscious. And a lot of times what happens is it's a thought that travels directly into the subconscious without ever passing the conscious mind. So realize this, some of our thoughts, as we plant them into our subconscious, they first make a quick pit stop at our conscious mind. Our conscious mind realizes that we're having the thought and then still decides to send it forward into the subconscious. Then there are certain thoughts that just totally bypass the, the conscious mind. And, and again, a prime example of the conscious mind realizing what's going on is a person that says to themselves, I'm afraid of failure, or I'm afraid of heights, or I'm afraid of commitment. Well, what's happening is that's the conscious mind acknowledging that the thought is there. Okay, when you have a fear of success, that doesn't happen. Because as I said before, most people do not look in the mirror and admit that they have a fear of success because they don't know that they have it. Because what has happened is, again, 
the thought has been planted into the subconscious, but it did not make that pit stop into the conscious mind. It went directly through. Okay, so now, for most of the people who aren't sure whether they suffer from this limiting belief, a couple of steps you have to take to identify it, okay? Ask yourself the following questions, okay? If you've answered no to any of these questions, you know, then look at your actions. But first, take a look at this. Do you set goals and not follow through on them? Do you feel that certain goals are just not attainable? Do you feel like something negative could result from your, your actions so you wind up doing nothing? Do you spend money foolishly? Do you notice opportunities but not capitalize on them? Okay, now, simply put, are you not taking action or are the actions you're taking not working? Okay, if you've answered yes to any of those questions, chances are you either have a fear of success or some other limiting belief residing within you and robbing you of your enriched life. It's that simple. So to truly understand our thoughts, you know, we would really have to look back on all the relationships that we've had with other people throughout our lives and then look at all the relationships that they've had with others because all of our thoughts, as I said, the thoughts that we have in our brains today are nothing more than a result of all of our past relationships and events that have taken place in our lives. Okay, so what we would have to do is we'd have to go back, look at all of our relationships, look at all the relationships that they've had with people, and what we would find is one big enormous web of people linking to one another and impacting each other's lives in some way. Now, since we can't go back to reference every past relationship, we can only fo focus on the future. And again, in our mind, the past is created through memory, the future is created through imagination. So the first step is to focus on strengthening our present reality. How do we do this? Well, we do this by believing that we already are what we want to be, even if we're not. Okay, now, what that means is this. Rather than, you know, sitting around and telling yourself that you want to become something, that you're going to achieve some goal, tell yourself that you already are that something and that you already are actively achieving your goals. Now, you know, for some people, it's a little hokey. It may seem a little crazy. If you feel that you're not achieving all your goals, what do you have to lose? Part of the problem could be that you think you know everything that there is to know, and so you think that, you know, sitting around and telling yourself and feeding yourself these types of suggestions may be a little off the wall and ineffective, but I promise you it works, okay? So, um, you know, the first step is strengthen your, your, your present reality by believing that you already are what you want to be. And one of, one of my favorite ways to do this is the acting as if technique. Basically, you act as if you already have what you desire. Now, I don't remember the exact story, but I was reading a book called The uh, Success Principles by Jack Canfield, which many people probably know is the best-selling author of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. And, you know, he speaks about this a lot, the law of attraction and goal setting and stuff like that. And he spends a very good amount of time, because it is important, speaking about the importance of acting as if you already are. And he speaks about him and a group of people that all had these, you know, goals and desires to, to be successful. And uh, they, were, they were working with some sort of a leader who was helping them to achieve their goals. And she said, what I want to do to really help you achieve your goals is I'm going to have a get together and it's going to be called the come as you are ball, I believe it was called. And basically what she wanted everyone to do was come to this ball or dance dressed and acting like what they wanted to be or what they envisioned themselves to be five years from then. And to make a long story, Again, because I don't remember the exact story, but what I can tell you is the exact result, which was very real. Every single person that came to that bowl dressed as whatever they wanted to be. He wanted to be a best-selling author. Someone else there wanted to be a famous actress. Someone else there wanted to be, I, I think, a famous investment banker. Every single one of those people that came to that bowl dressed and acting as, as if they already were what they were wound up exactly where they wanted to be five years from then. And this is true, this is a true story. These people simply just acted as if they already had what they wanted. The universe always answers accordingly. When I set up a list of goals and put them on my wall, I write them as if I'm already living them. 
You know, for example, when I wrote my goal to buy my house, I didn't, I didn't write down, I want to own a house by January 1st, 2008. I wrote, I am living in my brand new house in Staten Island, New York, and easily paying the mortgage because I'm successful and wealthy. And notice what I did there. The first thing I did was I wrote, I am living, okay? So I acted as if I was already in the situation. I also made it specific and detailed, my brand new house in Staten Island, New York, which makes it very real, and easily paying the mortgage because I'm successful and wealthy. That provides the backup thought that the reality will actually come true. It's not like you're saying, okay, I'm gonna fly tomorrow. How are you gonna fly? You have to, you have to attach the, the set of directions that make it realistic and what you're willing to contribute to make the thought a reality. So then what happens is, you know, this essentially sends a message to the subconscious, which is then communicated to the universe, whose responsibility is to make the affirmation a reality. Next, another good technique, set smaller goals, which in your mind are quote unquote more achievable than larger ones, and use them as crutches or stepping stones to achieve larger goals. The more you experience success, the less fear you'll have toward anything related to it. I've worked in the fitness industry for a number of years now, but I remember before I even joined the fitness club, I used to only exercise in my home. And I never wanted to join a gym. And really, at the bottom of everything, when you got right down to it, I was intimidated. I was afraid. I was afraid to work out in the gym because I painted a picture in my mind that everybody in the gym would be in phenomenal shape and I would be the outcast and just wouldn't fit in and I would spend the whole time there feeling self-conscious. So therefore, again, I let the fear paralyze me. I took no action. I did nothing. Okay? A very good friend of mine who was a personal trainer in a gym invited me to go work out with him for the day and I started telling him, no, you know, I only work out in my house, so on and so forth. He convinced me to go. And, you know, I remember where I was in my life. I was out of a job, I had just went and collected my, my unemployment check, I had $250 in my pocket, I went to the gym, I worked out, and what, happen, what happens many times is, if you have a fear of something, when you overcome the fear and actually do it, then the opposite happens. You actually get like an adrenaline rush every time you do it and you want to keep doing it. And so there, I was so, you know, amazed at my experience in the gym that it was nothing like I thought it was going to be, that I felt empowered when I was in there, that I wanted to continue. So what did I do? I went upstairs, took the $250, the whole $250 out of my pocket, and used it to join the gym, and I became a member of the gym. Again, if you do the same thing in life with everything else, if you just set smaller, smaller, quote unquote, more achievable goals, again, in my opinion, all goals are achievable, but when you're just starting out and you have a fear of success, start with something that you think is more achievable. Because once you achieve those little goals, they'll, they'll serve as a fuel for you to keep going and, uh, you know, like an energy reserve for you to just keep going and achieving more and more goals. And each time you achieve one, you'll feel more empowered and just want to keep going. Um, now, last but not least, of the most popular and most importantly the most effective way to overcome fear of success is hypnotherapy. And I think mostly everyone on the call knows how powerful and effective hypnotherapy can be. I'm sure Steve could speak for hours about numerous cases of fear reversal through hypnosis. It works. Um, you know, Anytime, again, anytime you have something, a limiting belief that's in your mind that's stopping you or hindering your chances of success in your reality, you need to get into the subconscious to fix it. And one of the best ways to get into the subconscious and correct the problem is through hypnotherapy. It's an alternative treatment. It doesn't involve any medications, any uh, surgeries, and there's no side effects. I believe Steve says hypnosis is like vegetables. You, can, you can't overdose. Am I right on that one, Steve? Oh, you're absolutely right. It can only get better and better the more you use it. Hypnosis is definitely one of my top recommendations for, uh, for overcoming fear of success or you know, clearing any other type of limiting belief that you might have. Um, and, and again, Steve's Abundance in 2008 membership program includes a special audio um, dedicated to overcoming fear of success. And, uh, you know, you can find that program at a special rate by logging on to www.gethypnosis.com. 
And Paul, that's certainly some valuable insight right there. And I just want to recap, if, if I can, just for, for the listeners so everyone's following along. So basically the most important steps in overcoming the fear of success process is to act as if you want to act as if you already have it. And you, the next thing you want to do is use smaller goals as a crutch to achieve a larger one. And you talked a little bit about hypnotherapy and the role that that plays in overcoming fear of success. And Paul, at this time, what can you tell the listeners about the, the special offer that Steve G. Jones has put together, the Titanium Abundance Series? Well, you know, I, I, I've been speaking about this for quite some time and, you know, telling people about it. Um, I've, I, I have a library of, you know, thousands of books, MP3s, CDs, tapes, videos, you name it, I have it. I've read everything from, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which focuses more on the financial side of things, to Deepak Chopra's spiritual side of things. And, you know, when I tell people about the Titanium Abundance membership, it, in my opinion, it really, it, Steve synergistically brought all of those things um, together in one program. Um, again, you know, you have everything from unlimited wealth, which will target, you, you know, the financial areas of your life, to unlimited confidence, which will serve as a fuel and energy to keep you going and overcome, you know, unlimited confidence. I tell people about this all the time. That's another limiting belief shatterer. Because if you don't have confidence, eventually, you know, lack of confidence equals limiting so the less confidence that you have, the more limiting beliefs you have, and essentially you're just going to have more and more roadblocks in your way. Um, he also has, as I said, what this whole call is about, the Overcome Fear of Success Titanium Series, um, which will effectively enable you to overcome your fear of success, which, again, you might not even know that you have. Um, overcome your fear of failure. You can do that with Steve's program as well. Um, and, and again, failure is probably, well, you, well, fear of failure, I should say, is probably something that, you know, you do recognize that you have. And everyone has a fear of failure on something. You know, there is something somewhere in your life that you want that you're not striving to achieve because you feel like you're either going to fail at it or it's just not going to manifest the way you want it to. Um, his program will also enable you to exercise better and create, uh, you know, a, a better mind frame when you exercise. I mean, I always say true self-improvement or progressive enhancement, as I like to call it, it is a mind-body experience. You know, if you, if, you, if you train your body for your whole life but never pick up a book and read how to strengthen your mind, what's going to happen is you'll probably be, you know, you'll live to 120 years old, but you won't have achieved anything. And whereas vice versa, if you, if you read everything there is to know and, and you're financially successful, but you don't take care of your body, you know, you'll, you'll have success, but you'll die at a young age and you won't be able to enjoy it. Um, unlimited motivation, we all need motivation. And again, Steve's, Steve's program will deliver that to you. Social finesse, which is an, a very, another very interesting topic. I say that, you know, no one ever gets to the top by themselves. Not Oprah Winfrey, not Donald Trump, not Jack Canfield, not Frank Mangano, not Paul Mesetta, not Steve G. Jones. Every, every person's success is dictated by the relationships that they've built in their life. And, you know, being able to master social finesse will enable you to do that. Uh, you have to have a balance in your life and everything that you do um, because if you don't, what will happen is, it, you know, if you have a lack of something somewhere in your life, the universe is going to try to make up for it somewhere else. So it's better to have the balance yourself knowing, you know, and being conscious of that than having the universe change the balance for you and throw you a curveball. Uh, just another thing you can achieve with this program, increase your energy, um, and the two last ones that I, that I find very interesting as well, eliminating procrastination, which is procrastination is a terrible disease, I like to call it, that many people suffer from. It's, it's again, the inability to take action. Uh, you put things off. You tell yourself you're going to get to it tomorrow. You come up with excuses as to why to not, now is not the right time. And as I said before, you can have talent. You can have knowledge. You can have persistence if you don't take action. You know, that's really all just a waste of time. And, and not taking action is, is just procrastination. Eliminate your procrastination with the Titanium Abundance membership. And last but not least, 
learn to make rapid decisions. Uh, you know, uh, being able to efficiently and effectively make a decision uh, to capitalize on an opportunity can change your life. There are plenty of people that, you know, claim that, you know, they, they just happen to be lucky on something, but luck is nothing more. Remember this, luck is nothing more than opportunity and preparedness happening at the same time. That's all it is. It's an opportunity that happens when you're prepared to take advantage of it. And one of the best ways to do that is to be able to make a rapid right decision, which again is something else you can learn from Steve's Titanium Abundance Package. Log on now, get hypnosis, www.gethypnosis.com. Well, well said, Paul. Thank you very much for joining us on this call tonight. Uh, it doesn't make a difference how successful you are. There's always room to learn new things, new strategies to help you achieve a greater level of success. And I think we've all learned that from your information provided on tonight's call. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was Paul Massetta. And, Steve, do you have anything final you'd like to say to the listeners tonight? Well, Frank, we have quality people coming to these things, and I want to thank the listeners for tuning in and writing in and being a part of what we're doing here. I really think that they understand what we're all about, which is bringing quality information, like the information presented by Paul, which people can use and apply to their lives. And I know I've gotten a lot of from what Paul said, and I know you have too, and I know the listeners have, and I want us to keep doing this, keep bringing qualified experts to the calls to make sure that we're all moving forward with our own personal goals. Well said, Steve, and I'm certainly looking forward to our next call. And ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Paul Massetta, Steve G. Jones, and myself, thank you for tuning in, and have a great night.